Hi, um, good morning, everybody, um, and welcome to this session uh, of getting started with the hybrid workplace, the future of work in partnership with People Matters. Um, we, Move and Sync, are bringing this session to you uh, a little about Move and Sync. We are, uh, you know, market leaders in uh, making flagship SaaS products. Um, our, uh, you know, leadership product of Move and Sync has been evangelizing the office commute industry for the last 10 years. And now we have launched something called Work in Sync, which is to enable the hybrid workplaces. So more about that later. Uh, for now, uh, before we get started with the actual session, a quick reminder that if you have any questions during the session, uh, please feel free to use the chat window and we will bring them up towards the end of the session during the 15 minutes that we have reserved for Q&A. So say, stay tuned with your um, chat boxes. Uh, today, to share their expert views on, you know, uh, what hybrid workplaces mean for us and how the future of work looks like, we have with us uh, some guest speakers. Uh, I would take the pleasure of introducing them to you. Uh, Niren Srivastav uh, is our first speaker. He's head of HR Aditya Billa Group. He's responsible for the HR strategy, policy and program management for the health insurance business of Aditya Billa Capital. He has an experience of 16 years in the domain of HR with focus particularly on um, setting up HR systems and technology, uh, HR operations and sales compensation practices. Um, welcome, Nira. Welcome, Nirin. Sorry. Uh, we, thank, also thank have with us, we also have with us uh, Dr. Nirav Mandir, who's Chief Human Capital Officer of Sri Ramakrishna Exports which is one of the world's largest diamond jewelry manufacturing and export conglomerate. Um, as the chief human capital officer, Dr. Nirav has strategic responsibility for SRK's global HR, IR administration, HSC, CSR, and compliance functions. He is also the project administrator, administrator for SRK's state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities, which are also certified by US Green Building Council. Uh, he has published more than six HR IR related research papers in various national and international journals and um, has received a ton of prestigious awards during his HR journey. Uh, welcome, Dr. Nirav. We also have with us uh, Deepesh Agarwal, who's CEO of Work in Sync and Move in Sync. Uh, Deepesh founded Move in Sync in 2010 with the aim to revolutionize the employee transportation space in India. He focuses on driving new growth opportunities across the Indian subcontinent and is at the helm of the company's thought leadership. Uh, with customer experience at the center of everything he does, he also closely monitors operations to understand the business challenges and insights and uses them to develop effective growth model. Uh, Deepesh has an MBA from uh, in entrepreneurship from the Indian School of Business, Hyderabad, and a BTEC degree in electronics and communication engin engineering from IIT BHU. Uh, Deepesh believes in the power of state-of-the-art technology, forward-thinking thinking clientele, and adept employees uh, to spearhead Move and Sync's growth trajectory. Uh, welcome, Deepesh. It was great to have you on board. Uh, Thanks, Ben. Before we... Uh, you know, begin our discussion uh, on this much awaited topic, uh, we wanted to conduct a short poll with all of you. Um, I think it's good to always open a channel of communication with you all and get your opinion. So I will request everyone to go on to menti.com and use a code which I will read out. Uh, I'll request the People Matters team to take to display the poll and the live responses on the screen. Uh, the code that you have to put in on menti.com is 4968019. And the poll question is, what's the future of workplace looks like to you? A more transparent and frequent communication culture? A more flexible work culture with a balance between work and personal life? A move from hierarchical leadership to network leadership? A more digital work place that enables productivity, efficiency, and effectiveness. So you could choose from these four. And I, I see almost looks like 100% of you have chosen a more flexible work culture with a balance between work and personal life.
Great. Um, we see some more responses coming in. It's about 22%, 30%. Let's see. Let's just wait for everybody else to respond as well. Looks like it's going to be a tie between flexibility and digital transformation. So uh, as we all saw, I think flexibility is on the top of everyone's mind, closely followed by you know, a, a digital transformation of the workplace. Uh, I would take that opportunity to just set context, context for our discussion a little bit uh, before I ask the speakers to reflect on the responses. And for that, I just share my screen. So we all saw 2020 to you know, bring in a lot of changes and changes we couldn't have even foreseen in, 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 in the last decade or so. Uh, according to a Gartner survey, 74% of surveyed CFOs uh, said that they plan to keep part of their workforce permanently remote after the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, some surveys which were conducted by uh, McKinsey, and this was conducted across 800 you know, um, uh, business leaders across different countries, uh, again showed something very similar to you know, what we saw in the poll, that 85% of the companies have accelerated their digitization across even areas like employee interaction and employee collaboration. And also a large percentage, close to 70%, are also focusing on automation and artificial intelligence. Uh, but it's not so simple in terms of, you know, there are several moving parts when we are seeing this whole uh, migration towards uh, partial remote, partial on-site working, hybrid workplaces. And this particular chart actually very uh, aptly captures the complexities involved. You know, there are some things which will be uh, enablers like say, access to talent, because if there is remote work, pretty much from any and every geographic region, talent becomes more accessible to you. Productivity, I think it's up for debate. And I think we can use today's platform to debate on that, whether it, it's you know an individual or a team, whether productivity increases or it goes down. Uh, cost of real estate and cost of your office resources are also some things which are sort of a, a complex area right now. And only time will tell how you know these complexities will evolve. Uh, with these in mind, if you know hybrid is here to stay, how does the road ahead look like? And that's something which we are, you know, trying to get a perspective on from our speakers today. Uh, my first question will be to you, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Mandir. Given that you know your head, uh, you know, a large conglomerate of manufacturing units and you know different kinds of uh, employees in your organization. Uh, what sort of an organization are you foreseeing in this, you know, whole hybrid remote plus uh, uh, on-site mix? Do you see, do you foresee any major changes? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Payal, for setting up the tone, my fellow panelists, Dipesh and Niren and the respondents. Very good morning to all of you. Are you aptly uh, put setting up 
the uh, tone of the session that uh, when we are talking about the hybrid workplace and especially in the manufacturing sector so had it been like i was supposed to give this answer or before march my answer would have been really different because when before march when when somebody asked talk about the hybrid culture then i i might have think that okay why we should be needing the hybrid workplace or why we should be needing the hybrid culture because uh, when i'm representing the manufacturing sector and employing more than 6000 employees so all 6000 employees have to come to the workplace in person because we can't take uh, allow them to take the diamonds to their home and do the cutting and polishing of the diamond so it has to be in person so the biggest challenging post pandemic was how we can transform the entire work culture of srk being a manufacturing company and uh, uh, as you might all will be uh, might be knowing uh, that the manufacturing sector doesn't feel doesn't uh, oblige with the privilege like the service sector like especially working from homes because if we talk about before march scenario 100% workforce was working in the plant or the ho office but the scenario got changed uh, mm -hmm. just before uh, when we are talking about the hybrid thing and when we are talking about the hybridity i would like to slightly go uh, into the history when we are talking about the hybrid the word hybrid came from a, a terminology called hybridity which is a biological word and been used uh, especially in the linguistic in early 90s when the, the professor homi baba coined down the uh, post colonization theory and in which we wisely use the word hybrid though so simple uh, the meaning of the hybrid is the mixture when you are talking about the hybrid we are living in a hybrid world we are talking about the hybrid cars we are talking about the hybrid lifestyles so according to me the the concept and the model behind uh, getting into the hybrid is to increase the potential and capabilities of any instrument or kind of a, uh, raising the bar of the human possibilities in the hybrid environment because when we are talking about the hybrid car the object is to reduce the usage of the fuel and, and can be uh, we can use the alternative source to uh, increase the potential of the cars and so as the uh, so as the, uh, the culture we can set in the organization when we are talking about the hybrid so the biggest challenge uh, for us before lockdown because uh, we were having our operations in uh, three cities of china and we knew what were coming so we uh, closed the operation well before the janta curfew on 20th march and we resumed the operation uh, in the month of may with the government uh, regulations and the biggest challenge for us how we can transform our employees mindset because they they never done the work from home kind of a thing in in their lifetime so that was the biggest challenge and it's not a overnight journey to transform your mindset of the employees to convert their mindset working from home and that was the biggest challenge and uh, the biggest advantage what we were having is apart from the 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 commitment uh, with risk within safety parameter you uh, touch upon that we it's a man, green building manufacturing facility which is india's only of its kind of a facility with the platinum rating so health and safety parameters were there uh, under uh, uh, because we do the hira the hazard and risk identification assessment for the workplace and uh, we are well ahead than the standards being laid down by the even the uh, local government so that was the benefits because the operation controls were already there in place and that helped us as much well resuming the workplace and uh, that was the biggest challenge in the initial period of time and i'll be touch upon uh, some of the my thoughts in the due course of time uh, so how are you operating right now is your manufacturing units all are up to 100% capacity in terms of uh, people coming back to work yeah in the beginning it was not allowed to work with the 100% capacity till the month of july and then the government allowed 100% capacity with the uh, social distancing and that was again a biggest challenge because it's a 3 lakh square feet facility where the 4000 employees are working in a sin single building and uh, to do the social distancing we had to really uh, redesign the entire sitting uh, arrangements and the, we had to really redesign the entire organization structure and that was the biggest challenge for us but with the uh, commitment of the group and the response from the management what we perceived and we been able to convert uh, the entire uh, transformation in the due course of time very rapidly uh, just within 15 days we have transformed the entire uh, operation parameters and uh, that's how we got succeeded and uh, 
you'd be surprised to know that we we already overcome the gap of the uh, that particular quarter in the uh, last one and uh, the, the the industry is really going good so that was kind of a challenging environment where you were not being exposed to any kind of uh, challenges in the uh, past and suddenly uh, the thing comes and that's all about uh, the vuca world we are talking about uh, i'll come to uh, nirin uh, nirin your perspective from you know uh, you know uh, a services player in terms of do you see any do you foresee any changes how how have you been coping up with it i mean uh, your you know style of operations people coming back to work how do you foresee it going forward yes yeah, so our journey uh, has been uh, yeah i would say like uh, you you were stuck uh, in the middle of a landslide actually because even in financial services if you uh, recall right from the beginning of the lockdown the government uh, mandate was very clear that there are certain sectors there are certain services which are exempted and uh, so for example banks where have never been uh, you know mandated uh, to, you know to be closed we are a health insurance company pile so the magnitude of uh, of the service uh, need in any other organization so if you are you know lending money for if for example we have a we have a lending company which lends housing loan or you know personal loans right. to people right we have a life insurance company we have a broking company and uh, you know we have a mutual funds company and we are a health insurance company in the group now the health insurance company was at the center of this because whatever be the lockdown uh, you know measures and you know you know advised by the government authorities one fact remained on ground that our customers these are our customers unfortunately uh, they will get admitted in hospitals right the hospital admission needs to be pre authorized as a process uh, the amount has to be paid either cashless or reimbursement and you have to work claims will come to your place because we are not 100% digitized across the country the it's a customer's choice hospitals will continue to flood you with the claims papers and therefore you need people uh, you know to process them because uh, people don't have money right more than 40% of our customers 50% of our customers do not have money to pay through their credit cards and they will be stuck in the hospitals Uh, so it was it was a it was a unforeseen one of its kind uh, you know situation which we had to deal with luckily for us sat aditya billa capital i would say across all lines of businesses in the in, in the financial services uh, vertical and of course we at health insurance we had started planning for it from around uh, 15th of march around 15th of march we could see that this is going to be there for 3 4 months to be honest no one knew that it is going to last beyond that Uh, there was no information we were prepared for this but i think uh, the way uh, the way this uh, i mean this shift has happened from the fact that how do we get people to office and i was sharing with you guys before uh, how do we ensure that my bare minimum service standard is up to the mark when people call me how do i return calls from a customer who is calling from a hospital or from a hospitalization need to my call center to where we are today we are fully uh, uh, we are fully uh, you know self sufficient as far as working from home is concerned uh, they say necessity is the mother of <laughs> all inventions we have also you know tried to figure out uh, all the solutions uh, but the fact remains that the nature of our business pile uh, yeah. as dr nikolo rightly saying you can't uh, take diamonds home to polish them the nature of our business uh, is such that we will even even in i don't know what is it the second wave the third wave or till the time you know normalcy returns we will need to work from office to the tune of 30 40% to run our business and i'm not talking about to be profitable you know to be 2x 3x 4x of what we want to do to run our business uh in health insurance in the healthcare ecosystem we need to be uh, you know uh be a mix of about 30 35% workforce to be in office so is it like task based certain you know certain tasks cannot be done from home 
yeah yeah so what we have done is we have uh, we have very clearly uh, defined uh, uh, how do we look at the manpower so for example we have gone role based all right we have gone function based uh, we have gone uh, you know to the tune of analyzing and asking this question with each of the functions what is the you know the typical day of an employee look like how how many face to face customer interactions are required whether they are mandatory or not uh sales visit is required or not uh what is what what are the processes that the employee is following let's say each day right how many of such processes are uh, you know digitized automated how many are not uh what are the non customer facing tasks for which an employee needs to be let's say in office in a branch or uh, maybe in our office and we have presence across 100 cities now aditya bill health is in more than 100 cities uh and for people who are working from home what are the most importantly what are the enablers for a possible migration to the work from home setup see there are a lot of uh, work from home is a fancy term has been a fancy term uh, uh, but work from home requires a lot of covenants to be tied up what is your data handling mechanism uh, what are the security protocols are they are you able to follow the security protocols there is a huge issue around data privacy right uh, and then of course all of this leads to uh, the productivity eventually at the end of the day uh, what are the governance mechanism you, you know you have uh, in the case of people working from home so we 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 have been asking these questions and basis this we have arrived at a model wherein we say that there are broadly three categories of people at work uh, one of course is 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 the, is the 100% remote workforce uh for example just to give you a perspective underwriting in in insurance right yeah, can work yeah. from home and it is yeah. not a new phenomena by the way even before the lockdown we had a large portion of our underwriting team working from home product team the pricing team right can work from home uh but at, at the same time uh, the claims team has to come to office right Right. Uh, some part of the hr teams have to come to office some part of the accounts team have to come to office but the planning and strategy team can work from home so one right. one uh, one section is of course the the remote workforce the second section is uh, the subject today which is the hybrid uh, uh, you know workforce and the third is the on site workforce and the ratio no one has a clue uh, no one has invented the right ratio but i would say about 35 30 to 35% of the workforce can easily be remote they can work from home with all the technology with zero dip in productivity mind you and right. uh, the rest of it can be split between 30 for i mean it depends on roles organization and 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 and, and the industry in which the uh, the corporate is operating in right uh deepesh let me come to you for you know a very high performance uh, environment like a startup of yours uh, what are the challenges that you faced and you know how are you managing the hybrid workforce right now dipesh you're on mute my bad no. sorry see if the task is defined by it is very defined and predictive i think uh, as as my co panelists mentioned it's easier to execute from home i think just to give the panelists a perspective of the business we do we've been in the office commute business so it's not like who moved my cheese who actually <laughs> moved my entire cake right because of work from home is just uh, it just vanished in the thin air so uh, and i'll give you a, a specific example um when when the government was announcing the first unlock 1.0 a lot of our customers we we serve uh, uh, multiple global fortune companies across the country some very very large employers and mostly around the tech sector like infosys wipro ibm google etc so then they were thinking about and deliberating about opening up the offices and and if you remember our country had various had a concept of containment zone i think a lot of it is is vanished and hopefully uh, it doesn't come again but this whole concept of containment zone was there and every uh, district was trying to make its own concept of containment zone and also they were unfortunately not synchronized across the country 
uh, what we had to do obviously as a as a, a saas office commute platform was our customers who had presence across all large cities uh, we were trying to read this municipality data every day once in 24 hours we were trying to go online and collate all the data so uh, we we felt that rather than just serving and and getting this data from the customers i'm sure a lot of you use this website called covidhotspots.in it actually became uh, famous and absolutely viral overnight obviously we were uh, moving sync was behind this making this website but this whole concept we were able to put together just in two two nights uh, pile but frankly i think uh, if we were kind of things which are which require a lot of innovation huddle back and forth while i think uh, technology does help and and we were all on on zooms and everything else i think doing very innovative and and um, uh, work which hasn't been very very clearly defined i think uh, face to face surely uh, has its value so i think while we could make this whole uh, uh, covid hotspots uh, make it possible and obviously there was a massive value in that right people wanted to know if they are in containment zone if their maids are coming from containment zone and there was a massive amount of uh, uh, use behind this we could make it happen but i think doing very as you mentioned uh, work which is uh, cutting edge new product development it's really really um, challenging from a complete work from home perspective and i think that's the reason um, frankly the the moment uh, unlock 1.0 happened in in june uh, Um, leadership and and i as a ceo and the other uh, co-founder akash and, and some of the other uh, senior members we would come to the office uh, and i think the the more reason was actually mostly because of uh, brainstorming as i would say so i think that's kind of uh, our experience uh, pile from the uh, startup uh, kind of a uh, uh, work from home environment yeah um thanks ipesh i think uh, good that you brought out that whole brainstorming aspect and my next question would be to nirav i think uh, like you mentioned you have different teams working from different locations and how does this whole uh, you know concept of brainstorming or coming up with new ideas or even collaboration how how is it happening there i'm sure you'll be needing a lot of cross functional collaboration yeah so first of all uh, dipesh uh, uh, happy to learn that the the hotspot brain was uh, and the, your company was behind creating that website and you owe a royalty from us because we we have, we have maximum time we have used the uh, entire data to uh, find out the spread within the community of uh, the city of surat because as i told you earlier under the with the government guidelines 50% workforce had to come to the workplace to work and we were so like uh, skeptical if that person is coming from a containment zone that it should not be allowed and uh, rather and then apparently we paid the salaries for the entire lockdown even till post lockdown also when the person was ready to come to the workplace but due to he was there in or she was there in a containment zone we were not allowing one to come to the workplace so thank you very Happy much for uh, creating that particular fantastic stuff of the community uh, when the pile answering to your specific question it, as i told you earlier it was pretty challenging and uh, i i must uh, tell you that uh, if i talk about the building the confidence towards your employee i think leadership plays a very vital role in that so uh, if i would say that the employees will forget what the leaders have done employees will also forget what the leaders have said but employees will never forget how leaders have made them feel so to building up that confidence leadership started to resume the work at the office starting from the managing director of the company came to the company to build the confidence that your household and your residents are not even safer than the workplaces and this where the operation controls and the things what brought the attention and the confidence of the employees while we resume the workforce because as i told you earlier the operational parameters were already there in the, in the company it had to be modified with respect to this uh, criteria and the guidelines uh, laid by the government but to build up the engagement and the confidence leaders had to play their role and by showing the uh, thing that people are coming to the office and the office place is more safer than the residence and that has been the scenario even as of now we we keep on receiving the uh, feedback from the employees that whatever the protocols and the things which the company is taking care 
uh, in the premises even we are not taking care of such protocols in our household so that was the, the kind of a confidence building exercise which we ran through the uh, entire workforce and just to give you one of the example when we were uh, the world world uh, even there was a time when even the antigen kit was not free of charge so company invested almost 20 lakh rupees to purchase the 10000 antigen test from the government and did the testing for the entire workforce voluntary so it was the invent the, because at that time government was not in issuing the antigen kit on free of charge so that was a kind of a confidence building uh, parameter which the company has set to build up a confidence for the employees that company are really taking care and we don't uh, call our employees uh, kind of employee terminology is not being used in srk we call our employees as a family member so they actually perceived that it, it's like a, a true family member we have taken care of their well-being and even to their families also so even we have allowed their family members to come to a respective place and get them tested because if they go to the government testing facility they have to wait in the queues and they have to wait for hours and even they might get infected during that uh, testing phase so that was a special exercise being run within the company uh, for the employees and their family members so to build up the confidence uh, and we resume the operations right um Niren, my next question would be to you and, and i'm picking up from what you said at that point in time that you know for a uh, work from home or a hybrid workplace to be successful a lot of covenances which, which have to be taken care of and in the current context where we see financial and economic recovery to be still you know quite at a distance for most organizations uh cost is going to play a critical role uh with that in the background how do you see cost structures impacting a hybrid workforce So uh, very, very, uh, very, very uh, in your face uh, uh, kind of a situation uh, uh, which we had and all of us uh, across industries had to, you know, rework our budgets, rework our plan numbers. So there are two things you are chasing here. One is that uh, you had a pre-COVID plan of revenue. Now, you know, because of the pandemic that is going to take uh, take a toll on the numbers various industries uh, various companies will have varying degrees of effect but the effect is going to be had to be drastic so uh, the first challenge is how do you ensure that the flow of top line keeps right. coming in the second thing is profitability profitability uh, is, is 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 a subject of prudence in these times because the the trick is that you can't uh, you know close the tap because you need to invest if you are going to and in our kind of business if you need to acquire a customer right there is a cost of customer acquisition which is important the cost of customer acquisition has to be funded and for that cost to be funded you need to have cash on your books it is as simple as that so then the question shifts if these are fundamentals which we you have to walk the tightrope let's say for the next 12 months what are the areas and that's how i'm talking about our approach that that's the way we approach the subject what are the areas which will require funding irrespective of the pandemic situation uh mind you we uh we were in a sweet spot we have been in a sweet spot rather because as the pandemic has grown the need for health insurance has also grown right so our business has been doing pretty well we are one of those few businesses which has been doing very very well but it also presents a question to you what I just now said. If you are acquiring customers, you need to keep investing, right? You need to keep investing in channel sales promotion. You need to keep giving uh, you know, salaries to your people where, wherever they are. And we are a large organization now. We had a proposed branch expansion in 25, 30 cities in the country. So if I stop that, then I'm saying that I'll not be able to acquire new customers. So we went ahead with that. But what we did was we did a two to, to you know tail ratio analysis, and when we said, let us list down all the expenses which we can hold on or which we can postpone. They are important. We are not saying that they are not important or necessary, but we can live without them for the foreseeable future because I cannot stop my funding to some of the expansion you know uh, modes. Each department head, each function head. 
had to come back we did not give any targets you can't you can't enforce uh, certain things in these times right that i'm going to cut let's say you know these many millions out of your budget and all that we said that this is your budget this is your money you know the times please come back to us in, in terms of what you can do believe me uh, i think uh, uh, if you do a normal pnb exercise and this thing always goes around each sbu head would want maximum budget right they came back to us and said we can do much more than what you think right uh, so what we did was we said that we need to spend right that is the mantra we will continue to spend but we will continue to spend right that's it and that is what we define as prudence we will not stop funding there is a huge uh, huge huge associated cost which i thought i'll make a point here when dr neera was speaking uh there is a huge cost and which you have to pay as an organization which is large and geographically spread pile is the fact that if you have uh, so for example aditya birla capital today has 825 branches across this country 825 physical branches aditya birla health insurance has now more than 150 branches now you have to buy a you have to buy you know hundreds and hundreds of liters of sanitizer right you have to give thermal guns right you have to buy sanitizing devices and so on and so forth so there is a huge unbudgeted cost which all of us uh, have been incurring which is in the category of no questions asked kind of a cost because you can't compromise right yeah. he yeah. also made a very important point and we had to go back and convince our people that look if we are asking you to come to office we are asking you to come to office which is a safe office which is a compliant office wherein you and your family members should be rest assured that uh, we are taking all possible precautions to ensure that there is no infection in this office you are safe in this office and when i say you are safe in the office it also includes the bus which will ferry you to the office so all this involves a lot of cost but this is very very necessary cost and again as i said these are no questions asked cost so that's number one number two is technology now i mention i think i didn't mention the first part when i was answering your question remote working there is an element of remote collaboration i think which you have been talking about and i'm assuming for a minute though it's a subject in itself that you have got the remote collaboration right but to aid the remote collaboration you need huge amount of dollars spent in ensuring that the technology and security pro protocols are there for example if you have a outbound and inbound call center right in a business like us in a service business like us which is so far uh, vast spread thousands of calls come in you have to call back customers now a solution which has to enable calling from home has to be invested in right you are you are mandated to save the recordings so there are special dialer machines in the office through which you know these callers call that is not there at home so you have to invest in that kind of a infrastructure right you have to buy licenses uh, then the compliance and the uh, and the you know the information security protocol someone needs to monitor there can be huge data leakage so all of it Uh, you know involves uh all of it involves a lot of investment which i think we have done and uh, you know you can't uh, do away with it is as simple as that sure. uh, you may call it the cost of collaborate uh, the the cost of pandemic uh, you know we have paid uh, as an industry but uh, in hindsight i would say that this is the biggest benefit of the pan pandemic for corporate world because you name a sector you even if you name a it sector the best of the cutting edge companies but i can tell you that the information security protocols the data privacy protocols i i i doubt if there is any company uh, you know there will be hardly you know companies which would be right up there to have the best vpns the virtual private networks for people to work from office the best of technology and privacy uh, and you know so information security perspective things in place i think it has made all of us much more uh, much more uh, technology 
फ्रेंडली इंफॉर्मेशन सिक्योरिटी फ्रेंडली डेटा प्रवेसी ओरिएंटेड सो आई थिंक दैट्स अ बिगेस्ट टेक अवे इफ यू आस्क मी दैट वी आर मच मोर रेडी नाउ we know that the call which we are you know doing uh, if you know, if you know there was a huge uh, huge issue with uh, zoom in between yes when the, people said that the zoom data is being routed to china and then there yeah. was there was circular saying that you know you can't have official calls with sensitive information through zoom and teams is beneficial we we have the industry has been grappling with things but i think it has only made us wiser and uh, cost to come back to answer in one line uh, your question uh, cost control has always been prudent in running an organization uh, but i think what it has taught us all of us i think uh, is the fact that you need to have you need to preserve uh, and not burn cash because uh, from a cost control perspective and there are different you know elements of real estate and i'm not getting into that that's a detailed uh, you know subject in itself but uh, the, all of this has taught us to be uh, you know cost conscious and and in a, in a and in a manner which i don't think any other any other program or any other you know approach any other intervention in organizations you know would have taught the industry it has happened through covid uh, that's my take on that right uh on the note of your technology and data privacy i think i'll come back to deepesh uh, you know to reflect upon that a little bit uh see deepesh your the, the the technology which you came out with 10 years ago it evangelized the entire you know employee commute space at this point in time post pandemic where there'll be a hybrid there's a mix and it's it's kind of evolving um what would you say technology is going to do and where all the aids will come in especially reflecting on what niren niren said uh, data privacy is going to be of critical importance yeah so pile i think uh, i'll i'll pick up from niren's that while uh, organizations will have to incur uh, uh, an unforeseen cost of uh, uh, reducing contamination and and making sure health is topmost but i think what is very important and and i understand some of it cannot be done immediately but surely is this is that first cost which is reduced drastically and i can actually tell you because it did impact our business massively is the commute cost now eventually people were traveling to the office and i'm sure you you see some of you have seen the stats which we publish on average an indian employee travels 55 minutes one side to the office now it can be said that your company is paying for the transportation or you are paying but eventually it is the money which is going and getting paid and we were also beneficiaries of of that some part of the business and uh, pile that commute cost is actually for most of the companies is either a second or the third line item so between commute cost and the real estate cost they struggle between the second and the third position so i think one very important thing which can which will happen and where eventually technology is going to play the part and especially the the solution which we kind of uh, which which you touched upon the work in sync is that with this whole concept of um, and dr mandir said and and niren said that while we don't know what percentage of the employees will work from home what percentage of the employees are going to work from office eventually there is going to be a stable equilibrium i understand that right now 100% of the employees are working from home slowly this 100% will become eventually i feel my feeling is that in 2021 i think all the organizations will try to get this to a 50 50 level and in 2022 people will try to figure out which is the best stable state equilibrium for this uh, hybrid index let me cost it but if you are trying to get your people from 100% to 50% what you should not forget for sure and if some of it could just be transactional as well is that you are basically asking only employees to come two to three days in the office then why do we all need that massive footprint of the office while totally understand that some of the leases can be long term etc but fundamentally i think people have been doing it but there is an important need to think of your offices like hotels so you need to kind of reserve those facilities right till pre pandemic niren is going to come to the office there is going to be a seat booked for niren a cabin booked for niren but let's assume niren or nirav are going to come only two days in the office why do for these other three days these these facilities it could be seat if you are commuting it could be a cab or whatever it is these are all these were all facilities which were assets which were available to you in this whole concept of 
us building the office and now these assets can actually be reutilized and hence you can fundamentally reduce the footprint of your expenditure which is either your second or the third biggest expenditure so i think that remains as a fact and i think it is surely in everybody's mind but obviously what the cxo chros want to do is in doing this they want to make sure that the productivity is not impacted it shouldn't happen that one fine day in in april um, instead of 100 instead of you expecting 50 people to come actually 75 turn up and 25 just start standing so you want to make sure that how do you use technology to just give like a hotel like experience i said right you need to reserve your your facilities you need to come to the office and make sure your productivity which is very very important as i mentioned in the beginning for collaboration for brainstorming for culture building we absolutely understand and and forget all this just for the the water cooler chats right forget all this just yeah. to have a cup of tea with my with my friend or with my colleague forget all the productivity related issues just to kind of cool me down i don't want to spend just 24 hours every day with my family right i want to come out and spend time with other people so for sure i think we need to step out of homes uh come to the office but we want to make sure that these things which were by default booked and reserved without any thought commute meeting rooms uh maybe cafeterias parking spaces desks etc they all moved to into a hotel like concept so i think that becomes very very important but make sure that when you convert to these hotel like concepts you don't make sure that you lose on the employee experience i think that's very important because finally you are all doing this for employees for the productivity for the business so you want to make sure that when you are reducing the cost you do it through the effective use of technology some part of this technology was earlier present but now you want to kind of look at it as a, as a sim, single and simple unified kind of a uh, kind of solutions uh, to kind of make uh, the employer as well as the employee life um, peaceful and smooth right um uh, you know on, on that note where you touched upon uh, the need to interact the need to you know uh, communicate with your colleagues the whole social aspect uh, i would like to ask this question to all three of you and maybe starting with nirain uh, employee engagement in a hybrid workspace uh, what are the challenges that you have foreseen and ho- how are you know hr uh, leaders planning to mitigate that going forward that if if it's a hybrid workplace how would you keep employees motivated engaged especially for the remote workers <laughs> yeah so it's it's uh, it's a challenge <laughs> it's a challenge uh, which we have been grappling with uh, and we are learning from it so wave one was the fact that uh, you know we will do uh, these virtual events i think uh, everyone across the industry has now uh, has now uh, done multiple virtual events uh and virtual events at the end of the day are virtual events right okay. uh, you know we used to have you know the biggest the, the the signature event in aditya birla capital right we are what 20000 employees is our aditya birla capital day wherein about 2000 employees come and it's the most prestigious and looked uh, you know up uh, event in the calendar that happens in mumbai jaipur sometimes we have gone out in dubai china and all all those places now we did our aditya birla capital day uh, virtual this time uh, now let me talk about the pluses and minuses both there are both for the first time in the history of this organization i think uh, more than 50000 or 55000 human beings would have watched this because we said everyone is invited plus get your families you can watch it in the comfort of your drawing room right the same uh, you know address by the chief executive the same set of awards uh, we could also manage the speakers uh, you know uh, so i'm talking about the pros right uh, we could get someone from us to come and speak now getting someone from us to fly the person down and you know just coming the person coming and speaking virtually is a huge plus so huge connectivity people you know uh, you know people and their families getting connected to what the chief executive is talking he is thanking the families i think huge pros the cons the cons are that man is eventually a social animal right and uh, the in person connect and you know so for some so for example if you were to receive an award right 
now this is the con i am talking about your picture coming on the screen and some announcer you know uh, announcing it and a trophy coming and the picture moving out then i am the next winner coming in it's a little uh, you know robotic Quite to my true. mind yeah visa me the fact that uh, you know someone coming on the stage you know and saying these are the nominees and you know you getting up in among the crowd and going up so these are the cons but i think uh, given the situation we are in and i said earlier uh, you know uh, necessity is the mother of all inventions i think all of us i mean i say all of us i'm talking about the industry i think we have done well uh, we have carried on with employee engagement but the biggest challenge here is the connect part it is not about the employee engagement and the activity alone but the connect question uh, you know and the depth of that connect which uh, you can uh, you know do uh, because uh, see there is this uh, whole thing there's a whole angle of psychological you know uh, psychology uh, angle uh, in yeah. employee engagement i am asking you uh, as an employee to come down for a yoga session for example or for a zumba session or whatever whatever talk kind of a session or a celebration session right but imagine you are working in your home uh, and this has been a challenge for our uh, working women female colleagues they have to take care of kids at home by the way who are grappling with online classes uh, and their issues uh, uh, right they are also catering to their uh, you know in laws who are old and now that they have seen in the traditional indian culture that the daughter in law is at home tea coffee and all those things and there is a husband also you know and now the entire family is there together so how much how much time so it's a it's a complete uh, you know i can call it a sort of a chaos right at home and then you are trying as an organization to do an employee engagement activity so it has its pros and cons but let me tell you it is uh, uh it is a mixed bag but the new dimension i think and which is a pro is that earlier employee engagement pile used to be employee engagement right now employee engagement has an added element of employee and his or her family engagement because now you have a you know great option of involving employee and their families so for example i i'll just give you an example we have our employee wellness program which is called vitalize you know we have made interest groups amongst employees and say that uh, you know you can do cooking you can do painting performing arts and so many things involve your families as well right so if my employee engagement and i think that is the that is the tip is that if my thought going into designing an employee engagement program can also include the families of my people i think the bonding and the connect uh, i have with the employee gets multiplied uh, by two notches so i think that's a huge uh, that's a huge uh, plus and this for me makes it a huge uh, overall positive uh, i think again which i will uh, drive from uh, from this pandemic pandemic because earlier uh, uh, i used to say hi hello to my employees right and we used to have parties and you know get togethers and deep uh, you know get together whatever in office now when i am uh, looking uh, uh, and talking to my team members virtually uh, this has this has been my experience many times the kids are walking and they are saying hi their parents are walking i get to meet them right i get to meet them and that is the best form of connecting with your people uh so i know uh, you know uh, the, the not that i did not knew the know the name of uh, my let's say team members daughter or son or kids or parents but i can see them i can i have been talking to them hi uncle how are you how is your health kids have been coming i think this is a this is a great form of employee engagement and connect so overall plus i think and uh, with no extra cost uh, with not so much of effort right uh, but with a much much uh, larger and humane uh, angle involved in this i think uh, that's that's my take on that very interesting perspective mean from you dr mandir i'll come to you in terms of you know uh, building a culture in a remote and hybrid setup how has your experience been what do you see as the challenges 
Uh, I think Niran has already uh, described the mixed bag model, which being widely uh, uh, applying in the current times. And I think just to add, then uh, just to top off it, what Niran has briefed about how we are actually uh, having the challenge working from home, so along with the family members, and especially Dipesh has also talked about the commuting part and the real estate part. Especially we are talking about the metro cities where the uh, the homes are not so lavish and the where the carpet area is really uh, stringent so while allotting a special room for a people or a person who is working from home without any disturbance is also a challenge so that that has never been thought of that the, the all of the uh, family members are working from the family if a working woman that will be the additional topic and i still remember uh, one of my conversation because earlier we were 100 percent from office and then later on it is like we are inclining towards two percent of the workforce working from the home and i i called my colleague and uh, i i told her that uh, we were supposed to attend the call and they said I'll, I'll have to complete the mopping first and then i'll attend the call because that was never been imagined from that particular side because no one has worked from home and no one was having any kind of experience especially when we are working from home the expectation from the family becomes more uh, more more enhanced when that uh, look the life which we are living in the our household so the people are working from home and people are also working for home. So it's kind of a mixed bag what Niran has talked about. And uh, mm -hmm. as he rightly mentioned about the uh, the annual day, we also used to celebrate the annual day where we, we call the employees along with their family members. So once in a year, we uh, get together in our sports complex facility where we do the uh, cultural events and the award ceremony. The group of almost 40,000 people uh, becomes uh, uh, like get together and so this type of initiative I think it's really hard to make them engage in the virtual world but what we have done in our organization is how we can engage the workforce with the concept of spirituality at the workplace because and then I have Ahmedabad is also writing a, a research paper that how the spirituality uh, is impacting the culture of the organization and that soon it's going to be uh, published uh, by next month so when i'm talking about the spirituality that is a kind of a very distinct parameter which impacts the culture especially in this uh, kind of a extraordinary time where you are supposed to engage your workforce and make them productive one has to make the workforce uh, kind of a uh, productive and one has to be relevant with respect to the potential of the uh, particular thing so i think that was the biggest challenge uh, for us to transform the uh, and uh, building the culture from working from home and creating a hybrid workplace where the people can equally be uh, competent even uh, while working from home. So I'll, I'll, that's my take on that. Sure. Um, we are almost out of time, but uh, you know I'll, I'll just take a few of these uh, uh, viewer questions. Most of them we have already covered in our discussion. One question which has been put by uh, Piyushi Mathur uh, how to make hybrids helpful rather than harmful? I think I'll just go around the table and ask for one advice from each one of you. Maybe I can start with uh, Niren. The question can you, is, can you repeat the question? How to make hybrids helpful rather than harmful? One advice. <laughs> I think it is to do with the culture and culture alone because, uh, and it has to do with the mindset change. Hybrid means, uh, so, so hybrid and working from home is, is a very, very old Western concept, right? In our own minds, we, in, as Indians, we have been attuned to, you know, hearing from managers uh, saying that, uh, the, you know, being in HR, I have seen multiple managers coming, walking up to me and say, uh, see, there's a problem with this guy. Uh, every once in a while, he says, or she says, mostly with she, right? Uh, that today my nanny hasn't come and you know my who will take care of my kid and you know my mother-in-law is not there and I'll be working from home. She is on leave or he is on leave. Now this mindset has to change because the technology is there, the laptop is there and the person, all of us including you, I mean you as the person who is complaining, I've been working from home. So please take out from our mindset the fact that work from home is not productive. It is definitely productive. What we are debating here in this whole concept of remote, hybrid, and on-site, 
is the level of productivity and yes there will be some productivity dips which is okay so it's a cultural uh, it's 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 about being progressive in your mindset right so to make it happen to make it embedded as a part of so it is we said in the beginning it is here to stay it will it is here to stay for sure but we all of us have to come together and tweak the contours and one of the biggest things to tackle and fix is the mindset otherwise i don't see i think dipesh also mentioned in the uh, sometime back he said 50 50 i think this will fairly uh, uh, will be fairly fairly stabilized at 70 30 30% 30 of the people will continue to work from home forever we will as organizations be uh, someone like a dipesh and his team and others will come and say put your role put some parameters i will tell you this role is a you know hybrid role or a you know remote kind of a role and these 30% people will work from home and we'll have to accept it as an organization uh, there will be policies around it but i think over a period of 12 to 18 months it will stabilize it it will fairly settle in that's my take sure uh, dr nirav to you i think what uh, niren talked about uh, the the upcoming scenario i uh, generally foresee in that uh, it will be a a uh, big transformation with respect to the the culture i think uh, in 2021 what i perceive is the the organization going to be more uh, flattened the organization hierarchy going to be more flattened and the the role of hr will be really critical and uh, vital as is always been because uh, when hr has been always been uh, a brand ambassador and a, a bridge between the employee and the employer but nowadays what i am forcing is the role of hr as also be to build up the confidence of the external stakeholders like their investors uh, their customers also so that will be the expansion uh, in the role of hr and uh, as far as company's culture is concerned and the uh, because when we are living in india 85% of the companies belongs to the msme sector except the large corporates and they are still grappling with the digitalization in their respective workplaces so uh, challenge going to be there but the sooner or later they have to transform themselves in this digital world and uh, uh, i i i do think that the respective organization has to promote their brand and uh, has to build up a culture of care within their organization where they they can and uh, the, the matter of trust i think when we are working from home the best uh, part is like is employer putting trust on me that i'm really working and i'm putting uh, trust on my competencies yeah. so i think the trust factor plays a vital role in this entire gamut sure uh dipesh comments from you before we close on this how sure. to make hybrid yeah. successful so pyle i'm going to take it in two parts i'm going to quickly answer on on this helpful part and i totally agree with nirav and niren and especially as an employer the responsibility of trust and the mindset uh my one advice as as people who are working from home to the employees is that i feel we as indians and especially because i come from a tech or an engineering background our communication skills are not good uh, frankly when we were doing these uh, in office i think half of it would get communicated via language and the other half of it would be via the body language and signs now obviously in work from home that softer part goes for a toss so i think my request to people who are working from home is to uh, try to improve on their communication and over communicate because those the other guy he or she will not be able to find out those softer aspects of uh, communication that's my one advice to improve and over communicate now the second part pile i will turn the tables and i think niren also mentioned i would want to ask you to share your experiences uh, i know you are uh, mother daughter mother in law wife your experiences of a work from home Oh, well my ceo has put me in the spot uh, so to be uh, you know frankly speaking when it first started it was very very overwhelming because like nirin mentioned i have my in laws have two young children my husband is also working from home and there were like infrastructural issues because two kids need two rooms to do zoom calls uh, we too are also doing zoom calls so four zoom calls happening simultaneously four different rooms homes are not structured in india like that but i think over a period of time with you know trust from you all like the organization from the team etc communicating over communicating with the use of technology i think we have found a balance somewhere 
however still for you know brainstorming meetings for you know coming up with some ideas it is always better to have that face to face time because what you can get done in that you know 2 hours of sitting across a table it is very difficult to do that you know over over a zoom so i would say like you said i think the equilibrium i also see is somewhere in a 50 50 mode that you know somebody will have a flexibility of showing up at the workplace whenever they need to collaborate or ha have that you know uh, in person face time but yeah productivity doesn't take a hit even if you are you know uh, working from home given you know all of these tool sets that we have and how we've seen technology evolve but yeah uh, you know to build on that trust factor i think that is crucial and trust and empathy is something which we as managers also need to display uh, for you know everybody who's working remotely um i think we've overshot the time by 5 minutes i think it was a great session i thank all the panelists for all your insights and thanks viewers we've got some very great questions but they got covered during the course of the discussion um so shruti over to you to the people matters team thank you thank you so much everybody that was a great session and we have uh, so many questions still coming in from the audience uh, i will request the speakers to take it offline we're going to share those questions across uh, thank you view viewers thank you for your time thank you for uh, being such a great audience uh, there's a link in the uh, chat section if you'll go on the right side of the screen you can uh, you know share your inputs there in the survey link because your input matters thank you so much uh, stay safe everybody Thank you guys all the best thank best you very much to you take care bye bye thanks